Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, I am taking some, what I will call like a press board, a fake board, you know, kind of like stuff from Hobby Lobby, you know, that mass produced kind of um, wood. And I am showing you how to upcycle it and to get it to be a little bit more upscaled. And these items are all gonna be sold in my retail booth. So when you're out there thrifting, you know, and you think, oh wow, this just looks a little bit too cheap. I'm gonna pass this. I just wanna show you what you can do with these items to give them a little bit more of a farmhouse look and what you can do to them to get them ready to resell if you're a reseller or just to overdo them or make them over for your own home. Now remember, this is just a process that works for me. Um, I just want to share it with you. You know, if this is something you're considered you know, doing or maybe you have one of these pieces because I think a couple of these pieces that I had done on this video were brand new pieces that for whatever reason, somebody didn't like them. You know, just remember that if somebody gives you a piece and it's not completely your color to match your decor, you know, there's always paint. I just absolutely love paint and, you know, I absolutely love to paint white and I think most people can add white into their home decor. So this piece to me looked like it was a brand new piece. It's probably a Hobby Lobby type of piece, you know, by the wood. It still, I mean, it didn't have like a price tag on it, but it still had some of the wrappings on it. And at $25, I knew that was a little bit on the pricey side, but it is a huge decor piece. Now these two windows, um, they were actually $3.09 a piece and they said Goodman's, which I'm not familiar with that store, but it's the same type of, you know, like a pressed particle kind of woody board um, and for me the blue doesn't really work and then the almost too organized pattern of the distressing of you know those windows underneath there I could not wait to get this transformed. So for $4.99 I snagged this um, shutter right up. Though I am not a fan of the stenciling on it, I would just like to take it back to what a shutter is, a nice decor piece. And there again, it's that same material, it's that pressed wood, you know, that kind of fakey wood. But, it, you know, this wood that they make, it's, it's strong and it's tough. So I definitely knew that I could take this up a notch. And then for this architectural piece, I just snagged it right up for the 609 price tag it had on it. I actually could see this distressed and all that, you know, all that detail just popping out. What I didn't notice, oops, that it had a owie on it. But I was not worried about that because I really feel that I could use that Durham putty that I have fallen in love with to fill that hole in. And then there was another small hole over here on the side. So the first thing with these windows is I needed to take that backing off. And they did have, I mean, I think this was fairly well made and it did have, you know, a nice backing. And I was glad that this was all one piece of glass and all one piece of, you know, this material. But that that's too organized fakey for me. So I'm just going to take it right off and throw it in the garbage. And I'm going to be removing the glass and just setting it off to the side in a safe place so it doesn't accidentally get broken. So I'm not really sure why these decorative windows have hinges on them, but okay. Then I'm going to take them off because if you watched my videos before, I, anything you can take off or take apart and paint separately is just, it just gives you cleaner lines. And then on the back of this window, you know, you know, with, goes kind of along with removing price tag and stuff. There were some little staples probably where the, like, they had those cardboard corner protectors on. And I always say nothing's more like a flipped item by leaving stuff like that behind. So I'm just taking that right off, just using my staple remover. If you don't have one of these, it is a great investment. It just makes removing staples or if you do any upholstering, just a nice tool. And then if you're going to be reselling this item, I would always remove any tags that you possibly can. Nothing says a thrift flipped item like a left on price tag. 
So if you're wondering why I am taking the orbital sander to this piece, it is because I'm going to be painting the undercoat of black and white on top to distress it. So if I get this blue off, this is just a different type of wood. So if I get this blue off, especially on the corners, that black paint, this type of wood just soaks in the paint. So then I know that it will beautifully distress. So it's worth taking the time to try to get some of that paint off, especially on the edges that you know you want to distress. Now for the shutter, I am going to be sanding off these words. And now I skipped that bottom word of love only because, as you see, there's that edge there. And if I would have taken this orbital sander and tried to sand that off, I would have taken that sharp edge off and made it rounded. So I'll have to hand sand that. But the rest of these letters, I can try to do my best to getting them off. Those corners are a little bit hard. Yet again, I'm probably going to have to hand sand a little bit. But even though you don't feel it raised a lot of times, when you go to paint, it is kind of like this distressing. There's When you don't see those hidden details and you paint over and go to distress it, it will just pop. So it's best to try to sand the letters off and try not to paint over them because a lot of times I find that they are actually, you know, they are a little bit raised and they show through your paint. Then, of course, don't forget to flip that piece over and look for any tags that need to be taken off. So let's see if we can fill in this owie on this beautiful architectural piece. And yes, it is hollow, but you know, you're going to be painting over it. So this Durham water putty, I have, this is maybe the fourth time I've used it. I lost count, but I absolutely love this stuff. You just pour some of the powder out on a plate and put a little bit of water on it. I mean, you just kind of eyeball what the consistency of it is you want. You know, I'm just using a popsicle stick to, you know, tongue depressor to stir it. And then I just put it in the hole and you just kind of keep mixing it until, you know, it's the right consistency for you. A little bit of wet, a little bit of dry. And, you know, I'm just going to fill that hole in and it dries nice and firm and hard. And so once we paint this up, you will not even tell that it had an owie. So then after letting it sit for a couple hours, I can go in with some 220 sandpaper and then just sand it nice and smooth. So on the big decor piece, I had nothing that it needed to be fixed or sanded off. So now I'm just getting around to cleaning them off with the crud cutter. Now the crud cutter, I just spray on a rag. I just wipe the item off. It is a great pep, no, no rinse needed whatsoever. And so then I just rub it on and then get anything, any gunk, any dust, any, you know, I usually spray them off the air hose, but any buildup that might be left on this. And then, oh, wow, this one was way more dirtier than you think. I mean, I don't know if it was from it sitting around or it was just something that was on it. See, this is why your paint would not adhere properly if you do not get this off. Since all these pieces that I am doing today are a pressed particle, fakey kind of wood, you know, that doesn't mean that it's they're weak. It is a strong, strong wood. So what I'm going to do, I find that the spray paint adheres, at least as the base coat, adheres very well to these kind of pieces. So especially for the metal, I need to be spray painting anyway. So I'm just using my Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one in flat back and giving these all a nice undercoat of black. And now when it comes to spray painting, the first you, there's you always need to do multiple coats. Don't think that you're going to cover with your first coat. You know, you're just kind of getting it on there, letting it soak in and then go back with a second coat. And even including this architectural piece, I will be giving, even though it is already black, it's since I'm going to be distressing it, I need to paint it also along with the hinges that I may or may not use for that window. And especially for the shutter, along with that de decorative piece, kind of how the bottom has a shuttery part too, you know, a spray paint is very handy to be able to use on these because it is, you know, it's hard to get in between those slats. And yep, I'm going to do the same thing on these windows. I'm just going to spray paint them also. It's just the way that this kind of board takes it in, um, takes the paint in. And especially since I'm going to distress it, it'll that since I opened it up with sanding, it'll just soak this black spray paint right in. 
So now I'm going to let these get good and dry before moving on. So to replace that fabric on the back of these boards that were on the windows, I am just using this leftover piece of drop cloth that I had that I reupholstered. And I always wash my drop cloth as soon as I bring it home from the store. So I am just going to be doing a tea coffee stain on this um, drop cloth just to give it a nice aged look. So the formula I use, I'm just guesstimating. I'm not sure if there's a formula for tea stain, coffee stain dyeing. So I use five of the tea bags, and then I use actually four inside what the Keurig cups were up for the coffee. So when I cut my fabric, I decided to leave it larger than I needed it to because I really wasn't sure if it would shrink, you know, being in the hot water. And then I knew that I would probably throw this in the dryer to dry it. So it's better to have too much and then to cut it off and have not enough and you cannot stretch it out. So what I do after I add the tea and the coffee into the boiling water, I just completely immerse it by stirring it a couple times. And then what I do is I just leave it alone until it is completely cooled off where I can put my hands in it and squeeze it out. As I do the back sides of my items that I resell anyway, especially I need to cover up that Durham putty and give this a nice coat of this flat back. You know, the nice thing about using spray paint, especially on these resin pieces, is that especially with the, where those holes are, it goes right in. So now I am on to spraying polyacrylic after my black have gotten their two coats front and back. What the polyacrylic does, it just seals that black spray paint in and just gives it a nice base. So when I go to distress it, that when I put the wax on it, it doesn't kind of make a chalky. I don't know why the spray paint kind of likes to blend in with the wax when I go to wax after I have spray painted. But if I seal it in with this polyacrylic, it works just fine and polyacrylic acrylic I have to say in the spray can goes a long way. So now I'm on to doing a base coat of white for my Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one in the flat white. So I like the way on these pieces that the spray paint adheres but I'm not necessarily a fan of the blue white of this flat white and I know that there are other colors out there but I have to say that when I start pricing them when I get into the fancier colors they are more expensive and I absolutely love my kills paint and primer so I just do this as a white base for my kills paint and primer so now it's on to my kills paint and primer which I talked about earlier that I just, this is the white that I have grown to love and I just love the way that this covers. So as you can see as I'm painting it on, the difference in the two whites, one's a little bit more blue and this one's just a little bit more warmer. So I've been asked before about what brushes we use and I do not like to spend a lot of money on a brush. We paint every day and so we just put it in a bag in the refrigerator and this little brush that I'm using today, I know it is a little bit very much worn and it's probably the end of its life after this project. But I chose to keep going with it because it, this pro, this jobs have all these little crevices where I'm beating the heck out of these poor brushes, especially with those shutter slat, slats. So I'm perfectly fine with just throwing a brush away after I've used and abused it. And then just picking more up at the Dollar Tree or Harbor Freight for a dollar or less. So after two coats of white paint of the kills, it, they are just ready to thoroughly dry before moving on to distressing them. So I know this is not really what my Cricut press is made for, but instead of running back and forth to my laundry room to get my iron in my ironing board, since I've been learning to do some vinyl on the Cricut, I thought why not go ahead and see how this works ironing out this piece of drop cloth for my windows and it actually worked out wonderfully. So after getting those pieces of drop cloth all pressed, I am moving on to doing some spray adhesive to the boards. These are the boards that were already on it. So I'm just doing some spray, spray adhesive. So this is going to attach that cloth to the backing 
for the back of the window. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to center it because remember I cut it larger than the piece that I needed to be and then I did dry these and now I press them. So I'm just kind of rolling it down because you don't want to just slap it on there, especially since I put spray adhesive already down there. And you have, you know, a few seconds to work with it. It's not an instant dry. So you can kind of move it and get it to where you feel that it is pleasing to your eye and that it's centered on the board. So now I'm just cutting the excess fabric off that I do not need. And then giving both sides of this window, this glass, a thorough cleaning. And I just, I absolutely love the Norwex cloths for cleaning windows and mirrors. So now it's on to distressing these pieces. And this is where, you know, spray painting a black and putting that poly acrylic is really going to make it so when I, I, sand through this white that that really shows up this press board these particle boards you know they just suck in especially since i pre-sanded them all the prep really mattered for the end result so what i'm doing here is i have a 150 sandpaper and I, what i'm doing is i'm just taking it uh, you know pressing hard on the edges where i want that black to show through so the harder you press the more that you get into the black and you get into some of that wood color if you want so and then what i do um, on these resin pieces the say the resin pieces a little bit differently you know i just only go on right where i want it to distress and i try to work in one direction because the resin the paint's just sitting on there you have to remember that that it's not like just cured there's nothing for it to soak into and along with the shutter pieces you know what i do here is i just push harder on that sharp edge and i'll see that this is where if i would have like taken that rotary sander i would have had a round edge at the bottom by that bottom slat so what i'm doing here is i'm just you know pressing hard on those edges i want that black to show through and then to sand the rest of the piece i just go lightly just to take that brush feel off you don't see the brush stroke but you kind of you can feel it just to make this these pieces nice and smooth but i do not do that on the resin piece because resin does not act the same you just want to rub that on where you want it to distress and then along with this you know this decorative piece here I go along the, the wood area and I press down on those corners so that some of that black shows through. And then I also, you know, where it's the flat part, I just kind of you know, rub that sandpaper back and forth just to get that smooth feeling. And the same thing for this metal, as I treat the metal like I treat the resin, I just kind of, you know, gingerly like swipe that on there just to get a little bit distressing because it does not take more much like i said it you know it does not soak into metal or resin so if you want to distress it you just take a quick little swipe you know so you just get a few little of that distressed marks and after getting all these pieces sanded to distress and then since i've lost the air compressor to the new shop it, it's coming along but i so i do have this craft blow dryer just an extra blow dryer that i have just to blow and make sure that i get all that sand dust off of before I finish these up with some Verithane finishing wax. And then like I said, now I finish all these pieces up with a protective coat to make them nice and smooth with using the Verithane finishing wax. And this is just a wax that you just put on and there's no buffing required. So now I just need to put these windows back together, just need to replace the glass and put it back on, try not to get fingerprints and try not to break it, of course, and then put that back back on and it is just almost ready. It just needs a hanging system and those hinges back on. And we discussed not even putting these little hinges back on these windows, but I did not fill in the holes when I was painting them. So and I kind of felt that they were in the wrong direction. I, I don't know, mixed reviews on these little hinges. So uh, Chris is just helping me put the hinges back on and um, putting some hardware to hang these items back up. They had hardware to hang them up, but... It's that where there's one, you know, you have to do two screws or two hanging systems on the wall. And I think that is very difficult. So I just like to sell these with some strong wire. So it just makes hanging them a little bit easier when you get them home. 
And especially on this little resin piece, he just has to pre-drill some holes and attach the wire through that. That had that two hanging system too, where you have to try to make two screws or nails in your wall level. And I do not like to do that myself. So I don't think that people buying stuff like this like to do it either. And when you got this resin piece home and noticed that owie, would you have just thrown it in the trash? Or would you have come up with a way to fix that hole like I did with the water putty? That I have to tell you, I absolutely am in love with the stuff. The, it's priced just right and it works wonderful. So would you have passed this piece out for $25? I absolutely think that it's a gorgeous home decor piece. You know, nice, nice size, you know, fill up a wall. And I absolutely um, love how it distressed. And I absolutely love how this shutter turned out. I like that I just took it back for a shutter. I, you know, maybe you were a fan of the words on the shutter, but I just, I, that was not for me. I think a shutter should be a shutter, a nice, simple decor piece and maybe a wreath or you know something like that not a um you know I mean a sign is a sign and a shutter is a shutter and can you even remember these windows being a baby blue color you know that I mean I loved it for the price of 309 I thought that was a great deal and I did not mind putting all the work into this and I absolutely love how that coffee stee tea stained fabric turned out behind it. I think they look very farmhouse and I love them in the white distress. So do I have you looking at these types of pieces differently? You know the resin, the press board, I you know I don't really know what the the type of wood is called but it doesn't really matter. Just I think just upcycling these and giving them this look just makes them look a little bit more high end. So what did you think of today's video? Did you like um, what I did to these items? I do think that I upscaled them a little bit, you know, but that's my personal opinion. You know, um, you know, taste is personal, but I absolutely loved all these items, how they turned out at the end of their makeover. So give me a quick comment. Um, I mean, I know it's, some people are gonna like what they were before, but that's okay. Like I said, taste is personal. So thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of my YouTube family, um, thank you so much. And if you'd like to become part of my YouTube family, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also give me a thumbs up if you like this video and hit that notification button to know when I've uploaded a new video.